is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2020 toyota avalon hybrid courtesy of hanover toyota in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i started this one up it did not make a sound that is the first time I've ever experienced it. This is my very first hybrid review. Hard to believe I've driven and reviewed over 500 different vehicles at this point and never done a hybrid. So today we will be checking the Avalon hybrid out. I like the looks of the Avalon and if you have a long commute to work, this may be a very solid choice for you. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so to start, there will be a few different trim levels available for the Avalon Hybrid. First one being the XLE, starting at $37,000. XSE for $39,500. And the Limited for $43,300. But so then regardless of trim level that you go with, power plant on the Avalon Hybrid will be the same. Powering this one is a 2.5 liter four-cylinder hybrid power plant, cranking out a combined 215 horsepower at 5,700 RPM, 163 pound-feet of torque available at 3600 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a cvt 0 to 60 time approximately 7.8 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 43 in the city 43 on the highway so that is where this one may be worth it to you considering the rear seat legroom as well but i'll get more into that in a little bit here regular unleaded fuel is required so you're going to save a little bit of money there as well and there are some driving modes for the avalon hybrid as well and so then when it comes to those driving modes the buttons are actually located directly behind the shifter they will include eco normal and sport and then there's also an ev mode as well well since we do have a hybrid all those driving modes are going to adjust things like the shift points the steering sensitivity and with the ev mode that of course gives you a full electric drive mode and that's going to be available when there's sufficient power in the hybrid battery of course but that is going to be the one you are probably going to appreciate the most being this is the hybrid so having said that let's go ahead and press that and see what happens here it does say ev mode unavailable hybrid battery low so we don't have enough charge quite yet at least maybe we'll be able to test that out a little later in the video but for now ev mode is not available but so to go along with that continuously variable transmission i was telling you guys about i should also mention there are paddle shifters that come with the avalon hybrid so we do have those today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway we are in electric mode right now i'm going to go ahead and put it in the sport driving mode though let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters and just want to see how quickly they're actually going to react for us here all right you guys in three two one That's so weird. That is so weird. All right. Okay, the paddle shifters are all right. They certainly react quick. Keep in mind, this is a CVT, so it's kind of simulated shifting, but looking at that left gauge is so throwing me off right now because I'm thinking that's gonna be an RPM gauge letting me know, you know, when to shift essentially. Again, it's a CVT, but that went all the way to the top. I kept thinking I was redlining it, but I actually wasn't because it's not an RPM gauge, so. That was weird, but still, paddle shifters are plenty quick, but again, it's a CVT, so it's not really technically shifting. But so now having done that, let's go ahead and find a straightaway here. Let's give control back to the Avalon Hybrid, and let's do a quick little acceleration test. Just wanna see how quickly the Avalon Hybrid here is going to get us up to speed with it doing all the work. All right, you guys, about to give this a quick little acceleration test, getting back onto the highway here. Here we go. Actually, not bad. Yeah, it's gonna be plenty of acceleration to merge you onto the highway or anything like that. It's not the quickest thing in the world, but it surprised me. It's not bad for what it is. So anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.65 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11 inch solid rear discs with integrated regenerative braking. And as far as that braking feel goes, I will say it's definitely on the softer side. Definitely wouldn't have minded a little bit firmer of a braking feel to this one, but it is on the softer side. So I feel like you do have to press in a little bit more to get this thing to stop. But overall, braking is fine. Besides Besides that, it's just not to my personal preference, I guess you could say, but touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, once again with the stabilizer bar. Sport tuned shock absorbers, 
and a stabilizer bar and sport tuned springs for the XS e trim level in case you were interested there. And overall, as far as the steering feel goes, there is a very noticeable difference dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So this sport driving mode that I'm leaving it in right now, definitely a heavier weight to the steering feel without a doubt. So that is the steering feel I would prefer. It's definitely quite nice in that sport driving mode, but again, it gets extremely loose when you take it out of it. So I will say that as far as ride quality goes, eh, it's all right. It's pretty much as expected. We got a lot of bumpy roads here at PA. So it's pretty much as expected for the Avalon there. And when it comes to cabin noise, there is an acoustic laminated front windshield and front side glass as well. So like I was saying previously, cabin noise is actually quite nice, especially when you're in that EV mode, especially when you start this thing up, you can't hear anything. But when actual driving though, cabin noise is definitely on point. That is definitely one of the high points of the Avalon hybrid, I will say that. And then touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Certainly not going to have any issues there. I did want to also mention that there is a head-up display that comes with the limited trim level, projecting the speed limit and your actual speed onto the windshield. Better help keeping your eyes on the road. So that is going to be there for you as well, if you wanted it at least. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Toyota Avalon Hybrid. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2020 Toyota Avalon Hybrid. Looking so sinister in all black here. Definitely looks good. Let's go ahead and start up front on this one. So up front, you will find a chrome front grille for the XLE and limited trim levels. However, you will find a piano black front grille if you were to go with the XSE trim level. To the sides, LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard across the board. And they do, of course, come with that automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. It's always nice. Smoked chrome bezels come with the XSE and limited trim levels. And there is a laser ablation design if you were to go with the limited trim level. So a little better illumination there with dynamic turd signals for that trim as well. And of course, just below this, headlights you do have integrated air curtains found in that front bumper help directing air around the wheel and tire combination just for a little better aerodynamics there but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the Avalon hybrid here and so making our way to the side first thing that kind of stands out on this particular Avalon is the hybrid badging chrome hybrid badging can be found on the front doors of this one and that ties together with the chrome window surrounds as well when it comes to those side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable heated side mirrors with integrated turn signals. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch silver painted alloy wheels coming with the XLE, 18 inch dark gray painted alloy wheels with the XSE and 18 inch chrome alloys for the limited trim level. But so then making our way to the back of the Avalon hybrid here, piano black rear spoiler coming with the XSE. That of course is what you guys are looking at right now. I like the piano black Avalon badging within that LED chrome light bar as well on the back. Definitely ties together with all the other piano black accents on this one. LED taillights actually come standard across the board. That is definitely a big win as well. And there is some hybrid badging just below the trim level badging on the rear trunk there. And of course, just below it all, you do have a hidden single exhaust outlet. So do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around back at the Avalon Hybrid, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are of course a couple different ways to go about doing that. There is a button by the driver's left knee, there is also a button on the key fob itself, and there is a rubberized button just above the license plate on the trunk itself as well. So again, a few different ways there. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 16.09 cubic feet to be exact. If that was not enough space, however, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it. They make our way to the rear legroom. That comes in at 40.4 inches. So for reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. You can also find a rear center armrest with cup holders for those rear passengers. There is rear ventilation. And for those rear passengers, you can actually get heated rear seats back there if you were to go with the limited trim level. So that is gonna be available if you wanted to go that route as well. 
and make our way to the front seats. Eight-way power driver's seat does come standard. It does come with a soft tex upholstery for the XLE and XSE trim levels. Full leather seating, however, does come with the limited if you wanted that. Two-way power lumbar support comes standard. There's ultra suede accents for the XSE. Heated front seats for all trim levels. Ventilated front seats for the limited trim level only. And as far as the seat comfort goes, it is plenty comfortable. Certainly no issues with my short test drive today. So seats have been plenty fine for me. Taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the XSE and limited trim levels, and it will be heated for the limited trim level only. Then make your way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have an Avalon hybrid specific key because you do have the blue highlighting on that one side of the key as well as the Toyota badge in the front of the vehicle and other places I'll get into in a little bit as well. But on the other side, lock on lock button to pop the rear hatch. This is a pretty simple key. To go ahead and start this one, however, there is a push button and start so all I'm going to do simply put my foot on the brake and press that blue engine start button located just by the driver's right knee I don't think I've ever seen a blue engine start button before but I like it and so for them once started up speedometer all the way on your right and there is an EV charge indicator all the way to your left and of course a large digital display front and center which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side there giving you a ton of different information like how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature there is a digital speedometer up there if you wanted it also safety information when you need your next oil change there's your radio information and a bunch of other things as well so really a good bit located up within those gauges but now making our way to overall interior quality power moonroof is going to come with the xse and limited trim levels it is optional on the xle if you wanted it Dual zone climate control comes standard across the board. Wireless phone charger with the XSE and limited trim levels. Aluminum interior trim with the XSE. And really what I like with the XSE is the aluminum foot pedals. That is one of the first things I noticed. Definitely gives it a sporty nature. It's still kind of on the slow side, but I love the aluminum foot pedals. I will say that. Wood interior trim you can get with the limited trim level. And that limited is also going to add to that ambient lighting as well, which is kind of nice. Home light controls for up to three different garage doors found underneath the rear view mirror that is going to come with the XSE and limited trim levels. And by the way, if you were curious where that wireless phone charger actually is, if you push open the section which is just in front of the shifter there, that is going to be where that wireless phone charger actually is located. And then, of course, you can close it as well for a cleaner look if you wanted to. Just to the right of the shifter, you have dual cup holders and just behind that, a good bit of storage within the center armrest, including a removable tray and three USB charging ports. So that is quite a bit as well, in case you have three phones, of course. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display in this one. Nine inch color touchscreen display does come standard. Comes with Bluetooth and audio streaming. Apple CarPlay as well. Factory navigation system is gonna come with the limited. It's gonna be optional on the XLE and XSE. And of course, you could check out your driving statistics as well as your radio information up there and by the way when it comes to the sound system on the avalon hybrid you will find eight speakers if you were to go with the xle or xse trim levels however limited is going to bump that up to a 14 speaker jbl sound system which is optional for the xse that we have today and we do have that option so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one <laughs> Some of that bass, when you get a song that has enough bass, it rumbles the freaking Avalon. That sound system was crazy. Only constructive criticism I have with the JBL is the front speakers here and the A pillars kind of look like they're just slapped on there, but the sound system itself is 100% on point. The clarity, the bass, it's absolutely amazing with that. But last thing on the text display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Avalon Hybrid in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you 360 degree monitor is going to be optional on the limited it doesn't come standard on any trim level by itself but it is an option if you were to go with the limited trim level and as always that is going to lead us into safety and so to start the avalon hybrid is an iihs top safety pick plus which by the way is the very highest designation given by iihs front side side curtain airbags also come standard driver and passenger front knee airbags as well in the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks.
box tire pressure monitoring system as well as Toyota Safety Sense coming standard across the board. That will include pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert with steering assist, automatic high beams, and full speed dynamic radar cruise control as well. And blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert is also standard across the board. That's gonna be the little car icons in your side mirrors, letting you know if there's somebody or something in your blind spot so you don't go turning into anybody basically. But when it comes to my final thoughts now of the new 2020 Toyota Avalon Hybrid, lots of standard safety, which I love on this one. And by the way, well above average reliability by Consumer Reports as well, definitely a good thing. Great interior quality as well. I could not find Android Auto on this one for some reason. I don't know if maybe it's just an Apple CarPlay on the 2020 Avalon Hybrid perhaps, but the other thing is I absolutely love that EV mode. I don't know, this is my first time driving a hybrid, so maybe that's why, but I think it's super cool. And I definitely found myself pushing that button quite often in this drive here today so i do like that but that is about it for this review you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold